Over the past few months of working from home, I've been using my iPad Pro for just about everything. Uh, wait, wait, before you turn off this video, I just want to say this is not another iPad Pro review and it's not a video about my favorite apps of 2020. Instead, I want to focus on how I've been using it to design furniture using a free version of an app called Shaper 3D. And this video is not sponsored in any way, but I've been using it for a couple months now and it has not only changed the way that I approach design, but it has dramatically improved my overall efficiency. And so I wanted to share a bit of that with you guys today. And you know what, to make things more convenient, I've broken this video into four parts. One, why I draw out my design before building a piece of furniture. Two, my experience with designing on paper. Three, my experience with designing on a computer. And four, how the iPad Pro and Shaper 3D took the best of both worlds and completely changed the way that work. So to start out, drawing out the design before I start building is you know, not only a way for me to take my ideas and move them into the physical world, but it also helps me to see if the proportions look all right and how much materials I'll need. It's also a time for me to think about what techniques I want to use and what the best order to bring all the individual pieces together. Basically what I'm saying is, as I'm drawing out my design, I'm actually already building this furniture in my mind. And this process allows me to spot and work on any potential problems I might face during the build. And generally there are two ways to design and that's drawing on paper or drawing on the computer. And both methods are great, but honestly, I, I just never really liked either of them. So let me explain. The paper and pencil have been used for thousands of years and still being used today across all industries as a method for presenting new ideas to others. And many times it's quicker to just sketch out an idea on paper than designing something from scratch on the computer. But it was just something that never really worked into my process. And while I love that satisfying feeling of drawing on paper where I can really see my ideas slowly being revealed by the movement of my hand and just generally the convenience of having a thought pop into my head and I can quickly grab a piece of paper and pencil and you know just draw it out because these two things are always available. But the problem is if I wanted to get a real feel for the proportion of the furniture, I needed to be much more precise than what just these two things provide me. So I needed to carry more and more tools with me if I wanted to get a true representation of the final product. And at that point, it's really not that convenient anymore. And on top of that, I needed many different views of the final piece, like the top view, front view, side view, also detail views and section views to show the joinery. And this process takes such a long time because essentially I'm just redrawing those same lines over and over. And I mean, what happens if I spot a problem that required me to change the overall dimensions of the final piece? What if I wanted to change the angles or the length of the legs? What if I wanted to change the layout of the partitions? I mean, when I'm designing something, I might start out with just one or two ideas, but the further I go into the design process, the more I become inspired, the more ideas I get, the more I start making changes. And it's really not that uncommon for me to make 20, 30 different changes until I'm satisfied. And with all that racing, my paper looks like a hot mess. So I ended up spending more time going back and redrawing everything on a fresh piece of paper. So you see, there's actually a lot of limitations with designing on paper, so I never really did it. And because of that, I now do all of my designing on the computer with CAD programs. With this method, I not only have an accurate representation of the furniture I want to build, but I have the freedom to spin, to move, and zoom into any part of the model I wanted, which is really essential for me to visualize the build in my mind as I talked about before. And not only that, but making changes is just so much easier with the ability to just click undo if one of my ideas don't pan out. And the other thing I really love about CAD is how how quick it is to take a design, create a copy, make some tweaks to it, and then compare the two options side by side. This is something I do every time I'm designing a new piece of furniture. And CAD programs allow me to do that and everything else I already mentioned previously in a much more efficient way than paper and pencil ever could. But as I said earlier, these programs also have their flaws. And one of the biggest limitations for me is where I can do the work. Sitting at a desk 
while designing just feels too much like work because that's exactly what I do at my day job. So whenever possible, I like to do all of my furniture design on the couch while watching TV or sometime if it's late at night, I'll do some work in bed before I turn in. Since I use a laptop, the mobility of the computer is not really the issue, but to be efficient with any of these CAD softwares, you really need a mouse. So to do any design work for an extended period of time with a mouse, it's really uncomfortable if you aren't sitting properly at a desk. And secondly, you know, what if I suddenly have a great idea for a new design or, or a different idea for a design I'm already working on, but I'm not at a computer? So I try to add the paper and pencil method back into my process by carrying a small notebook where I could quickly jot down any ideas so that I can draw it in CAD later on. But it never really quite worked out for me because one, I never seem to remember to look in my notebook after I get home, and two, there were just times where I completely lost the notebook. The reason why there isn't much footage of my hand-drawn design in this video is well, I lost them all. So there you go, there's another flaw for the good old paper and pencil method. So as you can tell, my criteria for judging what a good design method is, it's pretty high. I basically need a method that combines the convenience of being able to design anywhere with the paper and pencil, along with all the benefits that come with designing on a computer, which I thought up to this point was just too much to ask for. But when I came across the Shaper 3D app for the iPad Pro, I thought, you know, maybe this thing I'm hoping for was a possibility. But you know what? I'll admit, when I first saw the ads for the app, I was a little bit skeptical because, as I mentioned earlier, you really need a mouse to efficiently design in CAD. It does a lot more than simply drawing lines. The buttons work together to spin, pan, and zoom around the models. Some programs even require holding down a combination of keys on the keyboard along with a button on the mouse to accomplish certain tasks. I was worried that I would lose that incredible amount of control that I have with using a mouse. But man, once I started using the app, the experience was really something else. Being able to place my fingers on a model and move it around with gestures was something I had never done before in any CAD programs, but yet it felt super intuitive because these are the same movements that I've used to navigate on my phone and my tablet for years. And not only that, but moving the model with my fingers this way made me feel there's a connection between me and the model as if I'm actually taking it in space and physically maneuvering it with my hand, whereas using a mouse, my hand is over here and while the model is somewhere completely different and just doesn't feel the same way. And since all the navigation can be done with one hand, it frees up my other hand to handle all of the drawing operations with the Apple Pencil. And the way the Apple Pencil is integrated into the software makes this entire process just feel so natural and so logical. And I wanna show you what I'm talking about by quickly stepping through some of the basic operations I use to design a piece of furniture in the software. And like any CAD programs, I'll start by selecting the view that I wanna sketch on and then pick a shape from the sketch menu. And since I'm starting with a side panel, I'll pick the rectangle for this. Or I also have the option to just draw each individual line separately just by simply dragging my pencil across the screen. And this software will create the straight lines for me. But what's really cool is if I drew in a circular motion, the app will know to create an arc or a circle. I just find little things like this make this app so intuitive and just such a joy to use because I actually feel like I'm drawing on a piece of paper. Anyways, to set the dimensions, I'll just tap on a line and then type in the value. Then by tapping on the middle dot here, I can position the sketch anywhere I want. And notice that there's a number in the top right corner here, which actually shows the size of each square. So in this case, mine says 50 millimeters. So if I want the legs to be 150 millimeters tall, that tells me I need to move the side panel up three squares from the origin. And once that's positioned, I'll just switch the view and tap in the middle of the surface to bring up an arrow, which I can push or pull in either direction to extrude it. And then once again, just tap to set the dimensions. So if you've been following my content for a while, you know that I always use miter joints for my case construction. And to do this in this software, it is so simple. All you have to do is tap and select an edge and then push to create the 45 degree chamfer. Or let's say this was an edge I wanted to round off, I can pull in the opposite direction to create the fillet. I mean, how easy was that? All right, now let's quickly do the same thing on the other end. 
So with one side panel ready, I'll select the body by double tapping and then tap this little plus sign which will create a copy when I translate it. So for those of you who use Fusion 360, you're probably familiar with this. This is kind of similar to that. But before I flip it, I have to deselect this plus sign or else it'll just create another copy and another copy and another copy like this. Which, you know, it, it's great if I'm creating a bunch of the same panels, like maybe for drawer boxes, but that is not what we're trying to do here. So let's undo all of that. And then let's just follow these same steps to create the top and bottom panels. So I think by now you can already see just how streamlined and efficient this app is. It feels like it always knows what function I'm looking for and then places it right at the tip of my pencil, which reduces the number of clicks and the amount of time I'd spend to move my mouse from one function to the next. It may not sound like much right now, but the time savings, it really starts to add up in the end. So the same method of creating 3D bodies can also be used to remove material to create joinery. So just like before, I'll draw a rectangle and then set its dimensions and position. This time, instead of pulling to create an extrusion though, I'll push it into the panel to create the dado. And if you're new to CAD, just think of this whole process as adding or subtracting shapes to create new shapes. So basically, if you want to make a panel, just draw what that section looked like and then extrude it. And if you want to create a cutout, draw that section and then extrude it into the body that you want to remove material from. And hopefully once you start thinking of it this way, these softwares will seem a lot less intimidating. And in fact, all CAD programs work the same way. And within this particular app, I've got almost all of the most common tools that I'd find in traditional programs. There are different preset shapes, the option to draw curves using splines, 3D functions, and different constraints, all of which I could use to design the furniture that I want. But what this app does different is that it gives me the convenience and satisfying feeling of drawing on a piece of paper, all in a device that gives me the benefits and control of designing on a computer. And on top of that, this app was designed to have all the tools just a simple tap away, which, you know, once again, saves me so much time from not having to move my mouse every time I need to select a different icon or constantly switching between the mouse and the keyboard. And that's just the beginning because I found myself doing something I wasn't able to before and that's just being able to come up with an idea and immediately start drawing it in a CAD program no matter where I was. So in doing this, I've become more inspired to do work and have more time to refine the design I'm already working on. Then when I'm done, I can just take my iPad to the shop and start building. Not only that, but if I decide to change something in the middle of a build, guess what? I could just do it right there instead of going back in the house. And like a book I just finished by Mark Manson where he said that people often believe that inspiration leads to motivation which then leads to a desirable action. But in fact, these three things work in a loop where the action will create further inspirations and then motivate future actions. Which perfectly sums up my experience with using this app. I should probably change this video to how the iPad Pro and Shaper 3D made me into a much more productive person because the change that this package provided me goes beyond just a new software for designing furniture. In fact, I say it has changed the way that I work. For the first time, I was able to find a tool that allowed me to design in a very unrestrictive way. Everything a person will need to start designing a piece of furniture is in this package. It's intuitive enough for any beginners to jump into, it's satisfying and fun to use, and even the free version that I'm using, it's powerful enough to do the type of work that I do. It took away the limitations and excuses I often use when I know I really should be sitting down and crank out some work. And as I've already mentioned time and time again in this video that this is a tool that just keeps me motivated and keeps inspiring me to do more work, which I guess in turn have made me into a more productive person. So with that, I think this is the perfect place to end this video. But before I go, I just want you guys to comment below and let me know what you think of this video because it's a little bit different from my past content but my aim is still to provide you guys with some form of entertainment, inspiration, and education. So I'd be really interested to hear your opinions on this new format. All right guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.